You know, before there were Xbox and tablets and uh, virtual reality goggles, we had very simple toys at times. And some of those simple toys, I, th I think were a whole lot of fun. Like when I was a kid, I remember playing jacks. Do you remember, anybody here remember playing jacks? Yeah, jacks are a good thing. Young folks, if you don't know what jacks are, you can Google that when you get home. And <laughs> jacks were fun. Um, also, we had something, I think this was back in the 70s, uh, called clackers. How many of you remember what a clackers are? Yeah, they were two glass balls with a string on them. That lasted for about six months until some kid in Wyoming busted his head and they took them off the market, as I recall. But one of the toys that I remember, I guess it really wasn't a toy, but it was something very simple that uh, someone had told me about. I guess someone at school told me, and because I'm kind of a skeptic, I didn't believe them. But they told me if you took a magnifying glass and went outside on a sunny day, and you could focus the sun rays through your magnifying glass, you could burn a hole through a leaf. So this little guy didn't know better. I said, hey, I'm gonna try that out. And lo and behold, as you know, it works. The magic of a magnifying glass. Now, it's interesting, you know, we play with magnifying glasses when we're little, then when we're older, we actually need them to read stuff. But Christmas, many times, is a magnifying glass. It, it magnifies everything. It, it magnifies our, our hopes and our dreams, but it also magnifies our pain and our losses. Some of my greatest moments, my highest highs have been magnified during the Christmas season. And some of my lowest moments in my life have been also magnified during the Christmas season. As you know, we are in the midst of celebrating Advent and we're looking at different words that represent the Advent season. We've talked about hope, we've talked about peace. And today we're gonna look at what I think is one of my most favorite words in the entire English language. And that is the word joy, joy. That's a fun word even to say, say it with me, joy. There's something about human beings, being conscious, sentient creatures that we are. There's something inside of us that is always seeking for that sense of joy, joy. What is joy? Where do you find joy? Well, if you live long enough, you know that you cannot find joy in stuff, in things. You get something brand new, no matter what it is, and it'll bring you a sense of happiness for a little bit, but it will not give you what you're searching for that elusive joy. Things do not give us joy. Possessions do not give us joy. Money, believe it or not, does not bring us joy. It cannot be found there. Today, we're encouraged to look inside of yourself. Now, I've got to go to find myself. So I'm going to launch out and do something or travel or focus more on me and meeting my needs and my desires and trying to express myself and my individuality. But joy is not found by looking inside. Joy is not found, is it, by being preoccupied with yourself and your own needs and desires and pleasures. Joy is not found there. Joy is not found in substances. Joy is not found in success. It's elusive. But it's interesting, as you know, many of you know, the, the Bible really is a, is a book that's filled with joy. Joy. The Bible mentions the word joy 242 times. 
The book that mentions joy the most, no surprise, is the book of Psalms. Coming in second place is the book of Luke. Nehemiah 8.10 writes, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Joy can give us strength. The psalmist writes in Psalm 51, he prays, God, restore unto me the joy, the joy of thy salvation. Psalm 511 says, but let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them shout for joy forever. Joy. A prayer that God would restore the joy in my heart. That when we take refuge in God, that we can find that sense of joy. So joy is found by getting caught up in something greater and more majestic than yourself, something that will give life a sense of meaning and purpose. Someone said that joy is delight in life that runs deeper than pain and pleasure. Someone says that joy is hope in the midst of hardship. Joy is the deep power of God expressing itself in the heart of the believer. That's joy. Hope in the midst of hardship, a delight that runs deeper than pain or pleasure. My favorite author is C.S. Lewis. And C.S. Lewis was, was an atheist for a good part of his life. And then one of the realities or desire that changed him from atheism to theism to belief in God was this lifelong pursuit he had in his heart for joy. He believed that we are made for joy, that we crave joy, that we seek joy in so many, many ways. And no one wrote more about joy than C.S. Lewis. The title of his autobiography was called Surprised by Joy. Lewis writes, joy is an unsatisfied desire, which is itself more desirable than any other satisfaction. He says that all joy reminds. Joy is never a possession. Joy always is a desire for something longer ago or further away or still about to be. There's a future orientation to joy. Joy, he writes, is a byproduct. Its very existence presupposes that you desire not it, but something other and outer. Joy is not found inside of ourselves or thinking about ourselves, but joy is found outside of us. When our heart, our mind, our life is wrapped up into the things of God and in serving others in his strength and power. But saying all that about joy, one thing we know for sure about joy is that joy is a Christmas word. Whenever I hear the word joy and all the other month, 11 months of the year, for some reason, when I hear the word joy, don't you? I think immediately of the Christmas season. The angel who brought the news to the lowly shepherds, brought them good tidings of great joy. The wise men, when they saw the star in the sky, rejoiced with exceeding joy. When Elizabeth heard the sound of Mary's voice, she wrote that the baby jumped in her womb, leapt in my womb with joy. Christmas is all about the good news that brings great joy. It's the good news that the infinite has entered into the finite, that heaven has come down to earth, that God has become a man 
and walked among us to connect us to him, to give us life, to give us forgiveness, to give us restoration and salvation. That's what Christmas is all about. So joy is not something that we can go out and buy, right? You, you can't, you know, after church, you know, get on your computer and go to Amazon and order several boxes of joy and track it. You can't do that. Joy is a byproduct of being caught up in the life of God. Joy is a byproduct of receiving the gift of life that God gives to us in Christ. Joy is a byproduct of renewing our understanding and our belief and our trust in Christ. And that is what fills us with this inexpressible and glorious joy. Joy is a gift that God gives us regardless of what's going on in our world, regardless of our circumstances. We can experience joy on a mountaintop and we can experience joy in the valley. Joy is a gift from God. Joy is an overflow of when we worship him, we trust in him and follow him in our lives. That's joy. So my prayer for you that during this Advent season, during this Christmas season, that you would take one of the words of Advent, whatever that word is that you need the most in your life. Maybe it's hope, maybe it's peace, maybe it's joy. And my prayer for you is that God would magnify that in your life. Perhaps you can pray that. God, magnify hope in my life right here today. I need your hope. God, can you magnify your hope in me. Maybe it's peace. God, I, I, I need your peace. I need to know that I am in your will, that I'm in this right place and that things are going the way you want them to go. God, magnify your peace in my life today. Maybe it's joy. Joy. God, Father, please magnify your joy in my heart, in my life, in my soul, in this moment as I walk through this season. I want to be a reflection of your tremendous and glorious joy. I want to forget myself in you, forget myself in being there for others and See your joy overflow to others. Magnify your joy in my life. A friend of mine told me that uh, for many years he really did not like the Christmas season. He's kind of a little bit of a Grinch or a Scrooge. Great guy, Christian guy. But he said Christmas was kind of, I don't know, he didn't like it. He said, but years ago, something changed. Someone invited him to a very simple graduation ceremony in the month of December. And this was not a graduation from high school or college or grad school. This was a graduation from a recovery center. And so in this graduation ceremony, the men and women stood up and they talked about what had happened in their life the last several months in recovery and how they had been in a dark place and how they had found the light of Christ and how Christ had changed their life. And my friend said one person would share, then another person would share these powerful, sad, but hopeful stories. He said, after a lot of the graduates had shared, they said, hey, we want to lead you in some Christmas music, some basic Christmas carols. And so he said, this choir of people who were graduating from this recovery center started singing 
these Christmas songs at the top of their lungs. They were just letting it out and, and they were singing with such abandon and with such joy that it was contagious, my friend said. And he said, they were singing these songs as if they really believed it. And that entire room was filled with joy. 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 